All right, time for our Monday afternoon panel. Bruce Hawker and Graham Morris, both of whom have served as chiefs of staff to premiers and prime ministers. Uh, and let's talk about then Nicky Sabber's book on Tony Abbott and his chief of staff, Peter Credlin. Uh, Graham, to you first. What I mean, we know that uh, any office like that, prime minister's office, can be a very stressful environment, high pressured environment. What stands out to you as the most significant thing in this book? Well, for the record, I didn't sleep with John Howard. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask, but oh, thank you thank for you, uh, putting you, that on the record. Thank you very much. Um, look, look, Nikki, Nikki Sava is, is, has written a book that she hopes will sell. And she's got a few things in there that click particularly... Um, you know, she's not writing an Ikea manual or Hansard or something. She's writing a book she hopes to sell. And as I understand it, she's pretty well sold out on day one. So they're going to have to have a print run. Um, Look, you know, the, the affair thing um, is... Somebody said it, and she's just reported it. Should have been Everyone's denied it. And, and even at the time, everyone knew they weren't having an affair. It was just, it was just one of those sort of things. They were so close mm. that, that politicians, you know, couldn't understand why certain things were happening. And, you know, because she's a female, get put in that particular box, which was always quite silly. Um, Look, I, I happen, you know, you know, I know all the players in this book's book, and and there's only been about, you know, a dozen um, coalition prime ministerial chiefs of staff since Menzies. You know, it's a pretty small club, and she is a very competent person, and and a good chief of staff. It was just that the colleagues felt, well, if you didn't understand that you were becoming part of the problem. And do something about it politically, then where's your political judgment elsewhere? And all of a sudden, poor old Peter gets blamed for everything that went wrong in the government. And, and Bruce, putting aside you know things like uh, the rumour of an affair, uh, one of the most damning things coming through in the book is, uh, and from Nikki, is that he, Tony Abbott and Peter Gretland felt he couldn't do the job without her. Mm. And that strikes me as being quite bizarre. I mean, I'm sure she was a very competent person, but the, the idea that she, he could not function without her uh, says, I guess, a lot about the relationship. I'm not saying it was a sexual one at all, but it was a highly dependent one from his perspective. And, of course, uh, you know, he was making a lot of mistakes in government uh, that he hadn't made in opposition. And part of that problem was that they'd never really made an effective transition from opposition to government. I've mentioned this before. Credlin was all powerful in opposition, as chiefs of staff always are. As soon as they and very become... effective that partnership in opposition. Indeed, but as soon as you become the chief of staff to the prime minister or a premier, the relationship changes dramatically because you're now dealing with people who are ministers. They've got their own staff. They believe in their own importance in a way that they didn't in opposition, and you have to manage that much better than she did. And that, of course, was the source of so many of the problems that people had. In some ways, you know, they were probably shooting the piano player but uh, but the problem was that you know they did perceive that she had an inordinate amount of influence over him in a government that was not performing well and uh, and so I think there was probably you know, some some basis to the anxiety that people had that it was a dysfunctional relationship that existed here in the Prime Minister's office that was causing so many of the problems that ended up uh, seeing him turfed out out of, uh, out of the Prime Minister's mm. office by his own colleagues. All right, look, enough said on the book um, for now. I, I want to get your thoughts on you know, some confusion uh, after George Brandis's comments yesterday on when they'll have this plebiscite on same-sex marriage. It's, you know, now pretty clear that they're not saying it'll definitely be by the end of this year, but as soon as they can. Is this another hint, though, Graham, that they are looking at an early election together with what Chris Pine's been saying about doing the uh, ABCC bill in that budget week. What do you think? Well, well it was certainly untidy at, at the weekend when Senator Brandis has gone bang, this is what's going to happen. Um, look, I, I, I still think the Prime Minister wants to keep the early election option open. Um, the party is certainly readying itself, just in case, but it's still only about a 25% chance, I think. As for the other issue, um, the plebiscite on same-sex marriage. Um, you know, I, I wonder if Bill Hayden sort of hates... Not Bill Hayden, Bill Shorten hates gays and hates Penny Wong. You know, why would you want to bring it forward to the Parliament knowing that it's going to go down? 
You know, if the vote is now in the parliament, it's beaten, gone, cactus, gone for 20 years. And I just wonder, also the plebiscite, everyone's got to be very, very careful here because the no case hasn't started. But how do you have a question where you ask people, are you in favour of same-sex marriage? Well, majority, maybe yes, maybe no. But would you exempt the churches from it? Mm. Can the and churches that's, that's, opt out? That's something. That or they do. are we going to, you know, arrest all the ministers around the country? Doubt it. Well, I think it's going to be an opt-out um, in whatever happens, plebiscite or vote in the parliament, Bruce. But I mean, what's your what's your take on uh, the election timing question here? I mean, is this another hint that ministers, at least, are looking at an early election? Well, they're probably keeping that option open. Mind you, an early election they're talking about is in July. Uh, the last election was held in September three years ago, so you're only really talking about a matter of two months before one was due anyway. Uh, it, I, I think the more interesting question is whether they would trigger it with a double dissolution. Uh, That's right. And I think that creates all sorts of issues. So on the one hand, they're trying to do away with these micro-parties, and on the other hand, they'd actually be encouraging uh, the proliferation of minor parties by halving the quota required uh, for a Senate position. So I think their messaging is pretty weird there. Maybe they need a tough woman like uh, Credlin to be sorting out some of those problems. <laughs> Certainly there's no, there's absolutely no suggestion or, or, or no hint that they got their act together on this, the way in which Brandis came out and made those comments and then was yeah. howled down by the right wing of his party. Therein lies the real problem for Turnbull, uh, the, right. this, that fun We've dysfunctionality there. We got to go, Bruce and Graham. Good to catch up with both of you. We'll see you again next week. A quick break. We'll be back with more.